Everybody come on in here. stuff together i'm just getting here what up what up and i gotta grab some stuff here okay mm -hmm. <laughs> all right all right all right all right just trying to get some stuff together for y'all. <laughs> All right, your first live. Good shot, Anna. Just Anna. Good shot, good shot. Yeah, I came on up in here early. Schedule changed, and uh, wife is still taking care of some stuff at the school and salon. So I said, let me just go on and hop on up on here with y'all and everything. A light, right? There we go. All right, yeah. All right. So what's been going on with y'all, man? How's y'all week been? How has everybody's week been? <clears throat> this week has been pretty jam-packed for me. Um, been pretty jam-packed. Um, started off really, really, really slow. And, um, okay. <laughs> and, man. Then it just sort of pop. Okay, there's my water. I mean, I literally just got up in here. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the um the notifications there, Eric. What's going on, my man Jan? Good to see you here. Yep. That's good. Yep, he's down there in Florida. He's I think once he gets up and running, he's gonna be doing fine. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. <clears throat> um, man, I was I was going to go one particular direction with this here tonight. Now, and make sure y'all hit the like button. Please hit the like button so the notifications go out. Man, man, oh man. Mm. Leaders or followers? Which one are we? Which one are we? That's the question. Are we leaders or are we followers? That's the question. Which one are we? Um, let me see if I can find this other thing here. So feel free to throw some questions in there. Let me know how your day been, uh, what y'all got going on. Yeah, that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be leaders, but I don't know, man. It's um, a little iffy. It's a little iffy on that. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's a little iffy on that leadership thing. Um, yeah, let me pull this up. I'm just trying to get some, um, some stuff together here for y'all because I really didn't have time to today like I thought. And I just been just, just out here trying to make this money, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. Just trying to make this money and everything been going all over the place. And 
Um, I was in Clubhouse today, <coughs> and wow, there was some interesting, interesting um, observations with people over there in Clubhouse. Um, man, what I will say is, it seems like. It seems like people, I think sometimes people are operating out of fear. I'm serious. And I say that, I mean, it's just, to me, it's just true. They're operating out of fear because the things that people focus on, and when you focus real hard on money, sometimes it can be out of fear. I'm just going to be honest. You know, you're worrying about people paying you. You're going to pay me. You're going to. You're gonna pay me what I'm worth, you know, and you're shouting that. And and one of the things that I've learned as a business owner and what you hear people talk about all the time is if you love, if you if you're doing what you love, the money will come. They say that all the time, but it's clear that most people probably don't love being a notary. So they're they're constantly focusing on trying to make somebody pay them. And then they're running behind any and everything that's out there that they think will get them to pay. They will get them the money that they feel they deserve because, you know, you're going to pay me because of my, because of oh, this self-proclaimed worth. And it's just, it's interesting. And, and it's not just the folk that, <coughs> excuse me, that I've heard on Clubhouse say this folk every, on other times I've heard say this and it's like, Mm. interesting interesting you know so when it comes to this leadership thing um as to me as a leader you don't have to be told what to do to make money you'll find a way to make money followers are con people you're constantly being told hey do this and you can make money do that and you can make money followers are constantly worrying about what can they do to make money? They're always looking for somebody to tell them what to do. That's what followers do. Followers have to be guided and told every little thing to do. They, followers sometimes don't learn. I'm just hopping in. I had. I was going. I'm just going shooting off the cuff here. He said, "How do you handle things when times get rough?" For me, it's been a tough going, bro. Um, <clears throat> and I'm coughing not because I'm sick, because I sort of real quick and everything um one way to handle things when they get rough is that you sort of got to sometimes plan mentally for it sometimes you can't always plan physically for when this is gonna happen that gonna happen but sometimes you can plan mentally to know that this tough time doesn't have to last forever and that a tough time can be an opportunity for you to make money. <clears throat> and it might be tough with this, but it might be okay over here. And that's what you sort of have to do. So times have gotten tough. And for me, the normal way that business was flowing of uh, getting a notification and hey, I'm got, you know, I got a notification for a couple of closings for next week. That's not the case. Everything I'm getting is right now, today, tomorrow. You know, I got three tomorrow. Um, just picked up one a couple hours ago for 10 o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> you know, I got uh, 8.30 tomorrow. I got a 10 o'clock. I got a 3 o'clock. I mean, and got a 3 o'clock came in a couple of days ago. Then yesterday I had a last minute 2 o'clock. So... The main thing I think is that you just got to figure out how you're going to be just flat out prepared for whatever may come and know that <clears throat> know that things aren't always going to be good, but you can make them good for you. So just because loan closings are down, you I guess the question is, are you not getting anything? Because I think you're in California, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then, now, okay, shoot, man. If you're in California, that, you know, that depends also on your state. But 
this is where yeah cal that's what i thought so depending on where you're at in cali the question becomes if my local area isn't popping can i move and start taking business somewhere else and i don't mean move like move my house and family but can i just move okay i'm gonna be doing more work over here because think about it there are people who commute an hour to work because the pay and everything works real well so when you're looking at okay you're in lancaster now the question is okay well what can i do somewhere else is there another spot that's popping because there might be other areas that's doing better than lancaster but the notaries to them is terrible maybe you can start looking at marketing and getting some business over there maybe you can reach out to the title companies and stuff or the signing companies and say hey if you got business over here and if y'all like working with me i don't have a problem will it be a little bit longer drive maybe but if the goal is to get money coming in that's why some companies will okay i'm going to expand and take a uh have you know um i can't put a big walmart over here but i'll put the little walmart marketplace i'll take the little one and stick it over here you know sometimes you have to do that and this is where the leadership comes in at and not saying you're not a leader, but I'm just saying, you know, this is where it's like, OK, what would a leader do? I evaluate where I'm at. I know what I need. What spot around here can offer me the opportunity to have what I need in my family? And then you go over there to that area. <clears throat> Now, if you're working a nine to five or got a bunch of other stuff going on, it might be difficult for you to do that. Then you're going to have to sit back and say, OK, well, what else is going on around here? Maybe there's an untapped market. Even you say, well, you know, let's say all of a sudden you say, well, I can maybe market to the nursing homes. And you say, well, we got other notaries that here. Well, is there anything that the notaries aren't? Uh, is there a service? Because this is what I would do. Is there a service that the current notaries are offering that that you there's there a service that you feel you need that the notaries aren't offering or un, are unable to meet? Is there a particular time of the day that you need a notary here, but the other ones can't be there? Whether it's in the morning, in the afternoon, night, overnight. Hmm? Is there something? <laughs> Is there something with the pricing? It's nothing wrong with asking. Is there something with the pricing where it's too much, it's costing you or they're costing your residents too much, you don't feel the pricing is fair? What is going on, you know, now if everything is fair, cool, good, got it. But it's nothing wrong with asking that. It's nothing wrong at all. See, followers go around and say, can y'all tell me what I should, 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 should charge? No, you go and talk to the people and figure it out and find out what's the problem what is, because here's the thing as i've always shared that i learned from um, a person years ago people pro people pay you for the problems you solve not the ones you create so you go out here and you find problems and say okay what problems are you having within with within the realm of notary i've shared with y'all go talk to the chiropractors talk to some doctors talk to some pain specialist doctors find doctors who go to court or they have to sign affidavits because they're too busy working and they don't want to take off from work. So they send them a medical, a stack of medical records and say, OK, sign this affidavit saying <coughs> that these medical records are correct or true or, or, or the findings are correct. You swear to it under oath. And then you, the notary, go and swear them in. Hey, now, will you make 50, 80, 100 dollars? Maybe not. You'll probably just make your travel fee and five or 10 dollars or 15, depending on where you live at. For just one or two notarizations but it's still money coming in it's still money coming in the one thing you have to do as a leader is get your emotions out of this business and there are too many people who got their emotions in this business there's too many people that's worried about what people think of them and and as they were talking in clubhouse you know being diminished and looked down upon and you know this thing it's a cuss word but you're just a notary and people take that like you're, you're demeaning them and you're putting them now. Okay, call me just a note. You still got to pay me. You got to pay me with it regardless. Am I going to get paid? 
okay, you look at me as just a notary. No problem. You're still going to pay me the 150 to do this, right? Yeah. Okay, fine. Call me just a notary. See, I ain't worried about that because this is a trans. I'm this is a transactional thing here. This isn't me trying to be your friend and you trying to be mine. This isn't us going out to the club, this is uh, going to the bar. This is us. What do you need me to do? I need you to do this. Okay. And I'm going to go do it. You want to pay me, right? Yeah. All right. We good. So if you want to look at me as just a notary, that's fine with me. I don't need any external person stroking my ego and making me feel good. And that's what's going on with some notaries. Not all, but some notaries is like, well, I don't like the way they look at us and disrespect us and put us down. I don't because you can say whatever you want. You still got to pay me. If I'm the only notary that's here to do the job for you, guess what? You're going to pay me. Now, if you want to go with someone else, then fine. Go find someone else. But till then, you got to pay me. So if you want to look, well, you're just a notary. Okay, fine. <laughs> well, you're just a notary practitioner. Okay, but they still getting paid. See, it's, it, it's easy. To, see, people have a hard time with that because, see, when you're working your W-2, and you got your job and you're making the money that you want. You got your promotion in your little corner office. You don't give a flip about what anybody call you. I have that same attitude with this business. Because this is my business and I know what I bring to the table. So if you want to look at me as just the notary, OK, fine. That's you. I can't control how you view me. I can only control how I view myself. And your view of me doesn't dictate how I view myself. Period. Mm. <laughs> so if there's people out there who feel that people, they don't like the fact that people look down on them. Okay, that's you. But I don't care. Because them checks still hit the bank the same. <laughs> Whether you call me a notary, signing agent, loan signing. Them, them checks hit the same. Them checks hit the same. So that I can pay the bills that I'm obligated to pay. See, you, your viewpoint of me doesn't show, doesn't actually put money in my pocket. For the most part, it really doesn't. It doesn't. There are people, I mean, I know people who are making big time money and you, and you look at them like, oh man, they... But guess what? They, they still the boss. They the manager and they making money and you are working for them. So don't get caught up in that, y'all. Don't don't get caught up. So what's going on, Q? So <clears throat> let me see here. Um, Followers. When it comes to followers. You constantly. And I'm trying to pull some stuff out of here real quick, like for y'all. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show y'all because because I didn't get a chance to do it. Followers have to be told every single thing to do. Leaders, once they get taught, they execute. Followers have to constantly be reminded. To do what they need to do. That's why you have so many companies putting all these instructions, 15 pages of instructions, because the vast majority of notaries haven't learned or what they have learned, they haven't made it a part of them so that it's a so that it is in them and they just execute. See, that's the difference between a leader and a follower. Leaders execute. Leaders find out what needs to be done and then they go execute it. Followers, <coughs> they wait to be told what to do. They don't. I don't consider that most people won't consider it you. They just doing what they've been told to do. And I think most notaries right now are followers. Well, well, well can you tell me what to do here? Can you tell me how I should price? Can you okay, go research it? I tell people all the time, and I'm gonna tell you again here. Go to signing, well, go to notaryresume.com. And matter of fact, we're gonna do that right now. Because see. I keep sharing this with people and then folk like, what well, can you tell me? And I've shown y'all over and over and over again. See, a lot of leaders, they watch my videos and they learn stuff. Followers, 
they look at it and they're like, okay, I'm going to just ask Griffin, you tell me. But I just said it in the video. Well, I just want to make sure that's what you said. That's your follower. You heard what I said, then, okay, execute it. Well, before I execute, I want to hear from you to make sure. So I've shared this with y'all. And somebody put their zip code in the um in there in the chat. Somebody put their zip code in the chat. What's going on, Terry? Um, somebody put the zip code in the chat. Because I've shown y'all this, and I still have now there's a few people that's new, but there's some um other people that keep asking me the same thing. Who is it? Oh, that was that. Nine three five three six. All right, let me get me where I need to be at. <coughs> Over this side. So this is notaryresume.com. They're tied into signing order. What you do here, if you want to get an idea of what you can see, people go into notary resume and they see that thing about what fees you need to charge. So let, before I show y'all that, let me back up. Notaryresume.com. Even though your profile that's on signing order is tied into this, the prices you put in here does not affect what you're going to get paid from the signing companies, okay? This is where somebody wants to just find a notary. And you're putting your profile out there to say, I'm here, this is my background. And these are the fees that I charge. That's it. And it has nothing to do with the signing company. The signing companies are going to pay you what they already deemed that they want to pay you. So if you want to put that you want $200 for a refi, you can put it in here. It doesn't affect what you do in notary resume. And I have not seen anybody ever say that, oh, because I put, come to me and say, well, you put that you got this high fee over here in notary resume. But through the signing companies on signing order, we're not going to pay that. So we're not going to pick you. And I've never had that. They're going to pay what they pay. And there are people who pay more than what my fees are. <clears throat> so to find out whether or not somebody or what the fees that people are charging in your zip code or in your area, however you want to list it, you go to notary find a, um, you go to notaryresume.com, you just type in a zip code. You can, you can select, okay, notary. You got attorneys also on there. And then you hit search. And then you search and you wait for it to pull up the notaries in your area, okay? You got all these folk in your area, okay? You go, and then you click on them. We'll click on this young lady. And then you click to view their full profile. And then when you go down here on their full profile, here's where the asking fees are. What you do is you sit there and you build yourself a chart of some sort. I don't care how you do it. And you just select maybe the first 25 notaries and look at their full profile and see what they are charging. Okay, you're charging loan signing, full purchase, this, that, and the other. You just, and then from there, you probably could come up with an average and say, well, I'll charge this. It's that simple. It's not complicated. People get stressed over this and they start worrying, oh, if I put my prices too high, no, this don't matter. It doesn't matter what you put in here because what they pay you on the loan, the um signing company side of the house, which is through signing order, has nothing to do with this. Now, if I'm wrong, then somebody please correct me, but I have never been told that because you, if you put low, low, low fees over here, because let's just be, this could be considered pretty low. Where to the point some signing company, oh, well, if you'll take, oh, if you'll take $100 for a, re, a reverse mortgage, we'll just pay you uh, 25 you see what I'm saying? So that's all you're doing. Let's look at another person because everybody views themselves as, as different. So let's take this person. Let's 
These are their prices. So right now we got low at once 100 and a high of 200. Low of 100 for us reverse, high of 150. And you go through and you do that and then you figure out what you want to pay. Stop calling around asking people what they should put here. Figure it out. This is how you do it. And I've sh shared this multiple times. It's easy. Just that's all you got to do. It's some, it can be time consuming, but I'm telling you, you do that, you will have a better idea of your pricing or what people are charging out there. Now you've done your research and then you can be more confident in that. And guess what? The cool part is you can adjust it anytime you want. You don't have to be stuck with that. So if you want to start off with $100 for everything, and then as you get more experience, raise it up. That's fine. That's on you. You can do that. It's your business. So the big question in the room, are notaries leaders or are we followers? Um, let me see if I can. So one of the things that I'm seeing, and feel free to <clears throat> ask any questions, whether it's on this topic or make any statements and things of that nature. Um, Cause I really didn't have time to pull everything out like I wanted. Um, but let me see, I think I can show you all this. So right here <clears throat> from a um, signing company, their instructions, it's telling you, see, here's the thing. If we're independent contractors, we're supposed to know how to do the job. And the, the signing company, the people who hired us should not have to tell us how to do our job. And this is being told how to do your job. So it says a few of their documents requ um, require witnesses throughout the bottom of the right hand corner, especially these. <clears throat> the 1003, which I wish they would stop calling it the 1003 because most people understand it as a loan application. But the 1003 requires initials toward the top left side. Signing agents need to be mindful of multiple um, borrowers. The loan, most of the loan documents require to be dated that um, are required to be dated, and this must be done by the borrower. No stamping can be utilized, only hand signed. And see, there's people, and see, this is where, see, leaders understand the instructions and understand the importance, and they do it. Followers are constantly trying to find shortcuts. Their patriot form requires two IDs. Borrowers should not... Borrower should not be signing in the Texas Home Extra Electors, this, that, and the other. So these instructions, in my opinion, shouldn't even be in there because we should know to get these signatures. We should know that if we see an initial spot on there, we should do it. Oh, man, it's still going? Yeah. It threw me, I'll be honest, that, that clubhouse threw me off because Here's what I heard. And people keep, no, let me still, no, I ain't gonna mess with that. No, I ain't gonna, mm -mm. y'all go listen to the replay. But it's, it does tie in. It ties in. It ties in. Mm. So being a leader, it simply means. You're taking, as we some people say, you're taking the bull by the horns. You're 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 leading. You're moving forward in a particular direction. Follower, whoever's leading you, that's who you follow. And what is happening right now is that many of you are coming to this business, and you have no. Some of you don't have any desire to be a leader. You just want to be told what to do because that's what you've been done all your life. But being a business owner, you have to lead because it's on you. You have to make it happen. And until you make that decision to make it happen, it's not, <clears throat> it really isn't going to happen in your life unless you just follow what somebody told you and you're always indebted to them 
And if you ever move away from them, the whole thing that you built will crumble. Everything that you built will crumble because it's built on what they told you to do, not what you learned to do. And you should be able to move away from them and do something completely different than what you ever learned from them and still be able to sustain and survive. If you're trying to, if you're following this person and then you go to move away from them and and then try to do something different and it falls apart, it fails. The question is, did you really learn what you needed to do? You learned what they told you to do, but did you really learn what to do as a business owner to move your business forward? And see, this is why you have so many problems with certain title companies and, and signing companies and lenders is because the leadership structure isn't right. And when the leadership structure isn't right, it just trickles down to everybody who's involved with them. And that's why we have some of the problems with receiving pay on time, receiving orders on time, all of that, because people are constantly like doing stuff behind the scenes, doing stuff under the table. And then sometimes you have leaders who, because so much money is coming in, I ain't gonna say nothing until it blows up in their face. We as independent business owners, we don't, most of us don't have employees. So we gotta make it work. We gotta make it happen. And the question is, are you willing to make the necessary sacrifice? Leaders make a sacrifice. Followers, they look at other people's sacrifice. Mm. Okay. But leaders make the sacrifice. And what is the sacrifice that you're willing to make as a leader to get to where you want to go. One of the other things is leaders set goals. And y'all heard me talk about this. I talk about setting goals all the time. My main goal, I want to do at least 18 to 22 closings a month. That's my goal. If I can, and I see myself doing that consistently, I'm happy. I think I got 21 this week. I think I had 26 last week so that's my goal see followers if you don't have goals followers just sit back and whenever something happens it happens leaders are more progressive are more active are more aggressive and say well i need to go make this happen leaders will take a look and say you know what <clears throat> this would be a good money i'll make an opportunity for me case in point i had three signings yesterday 11 o'clock, 12 30, 3 o'clock. While at my not 11 30, 11 o'clock. No, I'm sorry, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. So while I'm at my 10 o'clock, I get a phone call to do a closing at 2 o'clock. It was a seller's. Okay. Yeah, I'll squeeze it in. Mind you, I got a 3 o'clock. I go and do it. I saw it as an opportunity to connect with a title company that I've never done any work for. Because they called me out of the blue and was like, hey, can you do this for us? And I was like, sure, I give it a shot. I didn't want to tell them no, because I felt that if they call me directly, they must have there's something about me that they like and they probably want me to do it. So I said, OK, yeah, let's do it. And I said, I'll figure out how to make it work. I said, I'm going to have to squeeze it in. But don't worry, I'm going to find a way to make it happen. It was only 20 pages. I was like, bet. I go, I do it. Everything went well, send it to them, invoice them, boom, we good. I get a call today. Hey, we forgot a document. Can you go back and get it done and notarized and then scan it back to us? Okay, yeah, I can do that. How much you charge? No charge. What? I said, no charge. I personally didn't see a reason to charge because they already paid me well on that one. And they just had this small little, okay, they missed the document. But the way I look at it is, as a leader, I look at it as, hmm, huh, this would be a good opportunity for me to get solidified with them because they know I'm not trying to milk them. And see, the signing companies now know that notaries are trying to milk them for every little thing. So I said, well, I need to do something different. I see an opportunity here. So let me do this. Now, do I do it? No, I don't do it. Now, if they would have insisted, then I would have been like, okay, yeah, you know, I probably would have said maybe $25 or something like that. But I didn't see any need at the moment 
for me to do that. But what I saw was an opportunity for me to stand out from the crowd, to stand out from everybody else. Because, see, I don't know how much business this company has down here. I don't know how much, how many other properties this lady has that she's doing a real estate investing. And I don't know how many more properties she's selling. But what I do know is that they needed something done. And I said, you know what? No problem. I'll do it. I'll do it. Not a problem at all. Leaders look for ways to make things happen. And sometimes to make it happen, it doesn't always cost money. And it's strategic when you sit there and do something for free. Followers are afraid that anything they do may not necessarily net them money. And they don't want to think, oh, no, 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 no. I got to get paid. I got to get paid for everything. And to me, people who operate out of fear when it comes to money, they start listing every single thing that they that that's an expense for doing in this business for this business to do a loan closing. But my question is, did you list those as those expenses and the cost to do stuff when you was just a straight W-2? Did you list what it takes to do your dry cleaning, to do your regular laundry, to cook your food, the water you um, was using, all of that, the electricity, ironing, toothbrake, paste, all of that. Did you list any of that as a part of why you want a 6% raise? Did you even ask for a 6% raise? No, you took what they gave you and you said, I'll find a way to make it work. But then you become a business owner. You're like, well, no, see, as a business owner, that's different. But you still got expenses. You still have expenses as a W-2. People act like there's no such thing as expenses to do a W-2 job. There are big expenses. And food is the number one. Because once you get there, guess what? Hey, we're going out to over here to um eat. And then you're like, where? Ooh, man, it's $23 minimum. I just got this job. Well, yeah, we're all going to hang out. Okay. And then you pull out that credit card and start swiping it up. And next thing you know, you got darn near $200 doing your pay period added to your expenses but you don't but that's the cost of doing business yeah okay so that that's what i'm saying so to me a leader looks for opportunities a leader surveys and analyzes stuff and say okay how can i make this to take this make this to be the best for me how do i do this and leaders don't whine and complain about every little thing when it comes to to the business. Leaders don't make excuses or make up stuff to do. Like, okay, well, look what I'm doing. If you bring in value, you don't have to tell anybody. See, that's the, one of the things I've learned when it comes to leaders. Leaders don't have to tell you they're a leader. They just go lead. And somebody who brings value don't have to tell you they bring value. They just bring value. I don't have to tell you, hey, because I know this much and that much, I don't have to do anything extra. I don't have to go over and above because who I am just shows you, okay, because I can execute what I'm supposed to do and I do it right the first time. That's what leaders do. To me, followers are constantly looking for an angle to convince people that they should pay them. Leaders like, once I get in there and do the job, you're going to know that you should pay me. You're going to know that you should pay me. Why? Because I came in here and did the job. And you're going to be like, wow, my results speaks for themselves. I don't have to ask you or beg you or do this extra stuff in order for you to feel comfortable about paying me. You're going to feel comfortable about paying me because I've done what it takes. I did what I needed to do. And if there's a need for me, time for me to go over and above, yeah, but I don't have to announce it. I don't have to tell you. I don't have to put in the, the notes of my closing report. Hey, I went over and above. That's what people, that's what followers do. Because you have a lack of confidence in your ability. When you have confidence in who you are and your ability, when you have confidence in the training that you pay for, to, to that's supposed to have you as a standout notary, you ain't got to go 
telling anybody anything, telling people, oh, look at me. Oh, look, look how much greatness I'm doing here. And I, you just go do it. You just go do it. And that's all I'm doing. And that's all a lot of you are doing. There are a lot of people who are just out here doing it. The young lady's planning Serenity Jessica, she is tearing it up. She had, I think she said she had her first week of, of all closings, you know, I mean, of um, five days worth of closings. That's where it's at. That is where it's at. Just go out here and do the work. Leaders go out there and do the work because as you do the work, you'll see other opportunities. Too many notaries are sitting back right now, just constantly waiting or try, I'm sorry, constantly trying to learn every single aspect of the documents. They're trying to learn every angle and every single word so that they can feel. And see, most people are like, well, well, you don't need to. Well, unfortunately, when you tell somebody they need to learn something, they sometimes go a little too far. And as we discussed today in the in the clubhouse, and I kept asking the question, where's the training that can teach us this? But everybody keeps saying we need to know something, but there's no training to teach us what we need to know. And it's not financially feasible for most people to take five or six different training courses, especially when each one of them is completely different and there's no there's no guidepost. There's no there's nothing that says, OK, here's what we need to learn. So will me going to this course help me learn this? There's nothing. So you're just sort of just out here spending money. And you're not really getting what you want. See, leaders sit back and evaluate, OK, what are you trying to teach me? Well, first of all, what do I need to know? A leader finds out what they need to know, and then they find the supporting material to help them in what they need to know. It's just like if you was in school. If you're there taking statistics, you don't go and just get information to help you with general math. If you're doing algebra two, you're not sitting there <laughs> trying to do stuff with trigonometry because you ain't got there yet. You find out what can support you where you're at. When you have an issue in your marriage, what do they do with the counselor say? Let's stay on topic. Well, see, she hit back then. No, 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 no. We're not talking about two years ago. We're talking about right here, right now. Let's find out what we need to do to fix this right now. So when you identify the problem that you're currently dealing with, then you can say, here's the solution to that problem. But you have not really defined what you need to know as a notary. And there's too many people telling you what you need to know. There's too many people saying you don't need to know it, but then you sh it's good to know. So if I don't need to know something, why would it be good for me to know it? And I asked the question also today and nobody answered. I said, show me legally why I need to know this. I don't want to buy, I don't care about your emotions about it would be nice to know. Show me legally that I need to know these things. Nobody can because they know that legally we don't have to. So then the question now becomes, and this is from a leadership standpoint, if I don't need to know this, if it's not legal for me to operate in this way, then why am I doing it? That's the question. And what's wrong with me operating within the legal guidelines of what I'm supposed to do? Because if you take it, if you take the mindset of, as a notary, yeah, just go do that, 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 okay. Would you want your mechanic to start doing things that is outside the scope of what they're supposed to do legally? Would you want your doctor? Would you want your dentist? Would you want the chiropractor? Would you want your home builder to go outside of the guidelines that a class A contractor is supposed to do? Would you want your hairstylist? So you're saying you should operate in the gray area of your business. You can't get angry when somebody's operating in the gray area of theirs. You want everybody else to operate correctly, but you want to operate on the fringe. You and me, most people say that's not good leadership. <coughs> the instructions from a signing service is helpful to do as in, however, a lot of signing service um, CPA. copies, um, a lot of signing service, uh, you know, I don't know what that CPS means. 
I probably should know, want people with experience as new deliveries. It's interesting. I appreciate your quote, giving people a chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Get, experience starts when people are given a chance. And that and that's why I came up with that quote. And you're the first person to ever even mention it. Honestly, you're the first person to ever mention it in five years of me being in the notary business and the three years out here on YouTube. You're the first person to ever say anything about that quote. Experience starts when you've been given a chance. You got to give people a chance. And that's what I'm trying to help y'all to get to. I need y'all to get a chance because I believe and I know for sure that the moment you get out there and you do this long closing thing and you see how simple and easy it is, you're going to be like, oh, okay, got it. But you got all of this stuff coming in at you, telling you, say something about the documents. It's imperative. You got to save the closing. You got to help them feel comfortable. You got to read. We're being told to do so much stuff and nobody who none of the other people who've been working with this couple or this individual for the last four or five, six months. Is doing anything to make them feel comfortable doing it to, to sign these documents. That's the part that really bugs me out. Nobody there's there's a person who's buying a house and through the whole process, nobody is making sure they're taken care of. Nobody is making sure that they understand what's going on. And then you get the notification to meet them at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And now you are going to take on a responsibility of people you don't actually know. You don't know the signing company folk. You don't know the title company folk. You don't know the lender. You know nothing about them or any of the bodies that's in any of the particular the people that's involved in this. And now you want to be like, I got you. Don't worry, y'all, whoever you are over there, I'm going to make sure this thing happens. That's the practicality of this. When did that become our responsibility? And I need somebody to explain that to us. Because you look at it. Just, do I know the people who I know the names when they call? But I got an order tomorrow. I don't know the lender. I don't know who the title company is until I look at the documents. I don't have not had a conversation with them. Anything. And you mean to tell me that that person who don't know me, who knew nothing of me only because of the signing company now wants to entrust me. Then, then what happens when I get sick and I can't be, do the order, something comes up and now they expect this other notary to be entrusted on the same level that they entrusted me to get this job done. Is that really how it's supposed to be? I don't honestly believe it is, but that's the way people are telling us it is. And I'm like, mm, I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, <clears throat> I really don't know. But as I've always said, there's people out here who their personality is that they hate to see people struggle. They don't want somebody to, 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 to be seeming like they're lost. And they feel sorry for them and they have this bleeding heart. Okay, that's nice. But everybody has a role. And it's a problem when you have the most the most expensive purchase in your life. And now you want this person who was just the other day on a cruise ship and they came back from their vacation and they get a notification saying, hey, in two hours, can you meet with these people for this loan closing? And you meet with them and they're like, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Oh, don't worry. I got you. Do you really have them? Oh, don't worry about it. I'll make sure you understand. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is that really what we're supposed to be doing? It, it, it feeds the notary's ego. It makes you feel good. And you think that by doing so, it's going to do what? garner more money and there are people who be like okay well if you're gonna do my job and make, make it so i don't <laughs> okay i kick you the extra 50 or whatever okay go ahead on but your hind part still can get in trouble because you're actually violating your state law it says good example Griff. no one wants a mechanic 
to do to do things outside of what they are required to do to someone's vehicle. That is correct. But we keep we keep saying that it's OK for us to do it. But we can sit there and say it's not in our state law that we should. But we should. How would you feel if the person who you are in love with and married to, I on the day you get married, do you do you take this law this person to be your lawfully wedded spouse to love, honor, cherish, and hold and this that and sickness and health and this that and the other? And you's like, yeah, I'm gonna be faithful ish. I mean, I know I'm supposed to to not look. It's just a jelly bean over there, but I'm going to look. I'm just looking. I mean, I ain't touching nothing. I'm just looking. Well, I know I ain't supposed to really explain the documents or this, but I'm going to just, I, I, I just got to say something. And sometimes our, who we are as per, can get us in trouble. It can get us in trouble because it's like we, we, we can't resist the temptation to do that little extra. And see, my biggest concern is simply this. Most of the people who really, who keep, who keep pushing this out about doing this extra, in my opinion, I don't think they can handle being called into court. So the question is, can you? Can you deal with being called into court? Is it worth you doing this extra? Is it worth doing something that you know you shouldn't be doing? You got a legal statute that says you shouldn't be doing it. Is it worth you messing up your family's life? Because some person over here who you paid $500 for a training course to told you, oh, this is what you're supposed to do. But what they told you doesn't match your state law. So at what point in time do you follow your state law? When you get pulled over by the police, they have state law that they have to follow in in doing it. The Terry stop, uh, well, that's a federal law. Things of that nature, when they're doing a Terry stop and all of that, I think it's that's Terry versus Ohio and all that kind of stuff. But the point is, the firefighters, the police, the sheriff, everybody got guidelines and stuff in order to do their job. And we all want them to do their job within those guidelines. But then we keep making excuses for money's sake. Let's be real. It's not really to help the person out. It's because it'll garner me more money. I believe it'll get me more money. If I go to above and do the extra, somebody will pay me some more money. That's what people believe. That's what people honestly believe that, oh, yeah, you'll get me, I, get me some more money. See, leaders, they don't, they know the money's gonna come. Because when they're doing business and they, when you're doing business, people got to pay you. People will pay you. They'll see how good you are and they'll be like, you know what? I got you. Because you met a need. See a need and meet it. <clears throat> and the need that needs to be met in the loan closing is us doing the notarial parts correctly. Because each one of you know that there are so many notaries out there that can explain the documents and show this, that, and the other but they can't notarize themselves out of a wet paper bag. And that's the problem. So you can save the signing because the person signed the documents, but the documents not, but it's not complete because it can't be recorded. <clears throat> they can't be recorded at the courthouse because you didn't do the notarizations right. And then I found out tonight, I find out tonight, I didn't know this, but in Florida, if you mess up a loan document in Florida, you can't make corrections on it. You have to go re-execute it. So just imagine you spent all that time running your mouth about the documents, but because you did not understand how to properly notarize and did not learn it, you got to go back out there and do it again. That hurts people more than anything. See, sometimes people, people think silence is bad. No, silence ain't bad. Mm -mm. Silence ain't bad. And see, I don't... I keep asking these questions and nobody will answer the question. Nobody will answer the question. And that should be a warning to y'all because the question is legit. What's the legal reason why I should do this? 
You can't cite me some statute from my state. I swore an oath. Does the oath mean nothing? We get on the police. You swore an oath, police officer, to protect the Constitution and allow me to execute my constitutional rights. So anytime somebody who swore an oath violates your constitutional rights, you have a fit. Anytime somebody who swore an oath to uphold a constitution, whether federal or state, you have a problem with that. So we swore an oath to follow the state guidelines with regards to properly notarizing signatures and identifying the people and making sure they're in the right capacity. So if we, if we swore an oath to that, why is it so hard for us to do that? Why is it such a lame thing for us to do that? Why does that make you less than a notary or less than a real person if you're doing that? That's the that's the question that I have. That is the big question that I have, and no one will answer that. I don't think anybody can answer it, but nobody will truly answer it. So leaders. When they go through all of this stuff that I'm talking about and they analyze and look at their situation, they make a command decision to do what is right. That's what leaders do. Followers find excuses to do what makes them feel good. So leadership isn't about your feelings. Leadership is about doing things that's right. And as a leader, whether in your household or within your business or your job, you look at what is the right thing to do to get the proper results. And what are the proper results that you're supposed to have? And the results that you're supposed to have should not be feeding your ego. If the results that you want is that I feel good that I helped this person sign the documents when they was confused and they didn't know what they was doing. Why don't that be the, the lenders? Let the lender get that good feeling. Let the title company get that good feeling because they're the ones who said, we want to do this deal with you, Mr. Jones. I never, I don't have a deal to do with you. What is wrong with doing right? Leaders figure out what's wrong and we do what's right. Because in doing what's right, it benefits everybody. If I'm wrong, please correct me. Please correct me. Give me some guidance. Give me a, a chapter and a verse or something. I've learned so much from you, Griff. I know I can't wait to implement what I've learned. You make so much sense. Witness signings and stay in law. That's it. And that was the thing that I heard missing today is that, yeah, people on one end was like, yeah, you know, we got to make sure we say, but I didn't hear anybody really emphasizing the importance of doing what our state law said. It's you have to, you, you need to know the documents. And see, leaders, when they say you need to do something, they can show you proof why you need to do it. In a marriage, let's be real, ladies, your husband comes to you and he says, Yeah, babe, I think we I think we need to sell the house and move to Nebraska. You're gonna be like, Show me proof. Show me reason why. Show me how this is going to benefit our family. See, people keep saying things, but they don't take the time out to give you actual proof of the concept. They don't give you proof. They just say, hey, we just, this is what you should do as a notary. Okay, show me proof. Well, I can't show you proof, but I'm just saying you should do it. I'm like, this is my business. You are giving it, you are a business owner giving advice to another business owner. And again, feel free to ask your questions or anything you have in there. You are a business owner telling another business owner, this is how you should run your business. Because that's essentially what you're saying. And you don't have any proof of it. It's all about emotions and feel good. Come on now, y'all should y'all y'all understand what leadership is. Y'all understand what leadership is, and leadership doesn't always feel good, don't always look good, smell good, but when it's done right, everybody who's affected by that leadership 
especially when it's good leadership, they're like, oh, wow, they benefit from it. And that's all. And the people who's supposed to benefit is your family, not the person who taught you. Your family should benefit from that great leadership because you're doing things right and you're getting paid for doing things right. Because that's really what it is. So any thoughts, any thoughts? I don't know what else to say. Um, I hope I was clear. I mean, I hope I was clear. And I'm okay with if I was wrong or if I'm, you know, if I, you tell me, oh man, yeah, I was wrong. But I'm just sitting here looking at these various instructions. House working. Where is it? <laughs> like these instructions here. You must have signers complete all the tax forms, not just have them sign. If the signers have is having any issues completing the questions on those documents, you must call our office immediately and make a note on the dashboard. Also, do nothing, not doing nothing, not doing both and returning non-completed forms will result in you not being paid for the signing. So they're trying to tell people. So in other words, follow the instructions and do what you need to do in order to make sure this thing happens. That's what this is all about. And I honestly believe that I honestly believe when you as a notary understand what you're supposed to do in accordance with your state law with those notarial acknowledgments and jurists and property certifications and everything else, it'll free your mind up to actually objectively look at the documents in front of you and you'll be able to ascertain what needs to happen. But when you're fully confused of trying to figure out all these things to do, it makes it hard for you to see the obvious. It's right there in front of you, but you can't see it. Why? Because you're so clouded with everything else, all of this other stuff, your 18 strings of income, your book, your tape, your CD, your, your, your speaking tour, your conferences. You're so inundated with all of that and you're barely even taking time out to truly be a notary. People keep asking me about my level of success. My level of success comes from I'm committed to being a notary. That's why I can do last minute signings. You call me, boom, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Just like y'all saw that I got the thing while I was doing the video earlier. <laughs> Bam, I got it. I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm. That's where I'm at. I'm not trying to, I'm not, the money will come. I'm not worried about whether somebody getting over on me. What are you scared about? Why? What is what is the concern? What do you deem as getting over on you? That's a good question. What does notaries deem as getting over on them when they do a closing? That's the question. Any advice on collecting payment from signing service that hasn't paid based on their payment term? Um, one of the things that I found out, go depending on which platform. You need to look at that contractor agreement because sometimes in the sometimes in the contractor agreement, there's information as to how to get payment. Sometimes they will give you a phone number or a, or an email address that's different from the one that you normally communicate with in order to get payment. There was a company that I went through that with. I was I sent the information. And then I didn't hear anything back. I mean, they didn't even reply. So I went and I read through the contractor agreement and it said any payment issue, send it to this email. Send it to that email. Might have been the same person, but I sent it to that email. Got paid. Um, you, if you have Legal Shield, I've been saying this. If you have Legal Shield, you can actually use them and talk to the Legal Shield people and ask them <clears throat> how to remedy it. You can ask them <clears throat> what do they um <clears throat> what do they recommend that you do in order to get um yeah, so let's see here resources. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> so, all right. So let me show y'all this. So this is my Legal Shield account. Um, got independent contractor agreement there. So let's start at the top. Um, let me see. Let's go with business. Non-disclosure, independent guest agreement, consumer rights, money loan agreement, contract, buy, sell. Somewhere in here they had, <clears throat> I thought they had, something on non-payment. Um, how to send a letter for non-payment. And I can't remember where that's at. But they got all of these other ones. Um, consult the lawyer. Oh man, I will. <clears throat> I will have to find it. But there was one time that I saw. Where the heck is it? There was, <clears throat> excuse me, I told you I was eating quick. There was one time that I saw there was a thing that you could get, um, submit a thing for payment. Let me see if I can find it. And I don't know thing is guest agreement they got everything but that i will find it i will find it let y'all know um i probably have to talk to my legal shield rep um hold on one second let me see here Yeah, you probably have to get with your legal shield rep to find out how to do that because there is a way. Um, okay. All right, so let me show y'all this. So what I did was I went in here to, to consult my lawyer thing and I just put in here non-payment, describe what it is. And then it's like, okay, contract, you know, upload your contract and all of that. And then um, all of this, that, and the other. So there's a way in here. I just can't find it right now. I thought I thought that I knew where it was at. My bad. I'm just doing this sort of on the fly. Because I've used them for civil litigation before. I had some stuff going on with a person. So I used them for civil litigation, but I had contacted them directly. Man, I ain't getting nowhere near free to the day. I was trying. I was trying. So is there any other concerns about the notary business that you have? Any other questions, um, thoughts, anything? So when it comes to you know, the, the non-payment, that's a tough one because you also got to ask, you know, find out locally in your state laws. Um how to go about doing it um, under a certain amount. I know they put that in small claims court. Um, it's unfortunate, but yeah. Hold on. Right there. Um, hold on one second. And let me give y'all her number. Let me give you her number. As a matter of fact, my wife doing her hair right now. <laughs> 
So I will put her number in the chat. Um, that's her information. Um, and that's her site. And you can contact her. Um, she's good. I've I've known her for for years. Yeah, me and Shan, yeah, we yeah, family friend. Um known each other for years. So I trust her. Um, here's her information in the chat. The glove is just a regular glove. It's just a regular, any kind of latex. I mean, not latex, um, vinyl glove. I, mean, I use it for um, gripping the papers. I keep them. It helps me to grip the papers. If I don't have that glove on, I can't, I can't grip the papers. I mean, my hands are, you know, with the lotions and stuff. So I use, um, I use um, the glove and the glove helps me to grip the papers. That's the whole point of the gloves for me, um, to grip the papers. So, I don't know why, I can't, oh well. They keep changing their stuff. All right, so <laughs> I know, I know, I know. People they be looking at me funny when I put the glove on and stuff. So, um, so yeah, I wear the glove. It's a if you have it inside out, it's real slicker, but you know, it's it's good, it's good. So I I use that um when I do the closing. It helps me to flip through the pages quick and all of that kind of stuff. I don't like the fingertips because the fingertips be falling off and everything in the glove. I like that better and stuff. Plus, sometimes people have their dogs and stuff, and I can pet the dogs with the glove and all that. So, um, but this is a great business. You, as the business owner, got to be the leader of your business. You got to step up and take charge and make sure that whatever information you're bringing into your life, whether it's from me or anybody else, can benefit your business. I know not everything that I say is applicable to everybody. There's a lot of notaries out there that act like everything they say is just, it fits everybody. And the way they do it fits everybody. And it's almost to a point where it's like, we're trying to make sure that everybody operates the same in this business. No, you operate how you operate. Just make sure it's in accordance with your state law. And be careful about how you say things like you must do this or you got to do that. Then show me legally where I got to do that in my state. Well, I don't know. I'm just saying I'm just saying what I do. Then you should have let off with that. And there's too many people that won't lead off with. Here's what I do. But the way they say it, and I can be guilty of it, too, sometimes is like we all should be doing it. The one thing I say we all should be doing is questioning the information that's being told to us whether it's valid and talk to the person who's saying it. If they're saying, okay, prove it to me. No, no, it, I don't think it's any, it should be any less than that you would ask for your husband. Prove to me that we need to move to Nebraska to your wife. Prove to me that you want to, that you should quit your job when we're in the middle of Pam. We got two kids in private school. And you're pregnant with a third and tell me and you you just you just found out you're pregnant and now you want to quit your job and put the whole and, and the kids got to stay in private school and all of it comes on me and I'm not eligible for any more raises. And the only way we're able to have this lifestyle is between our both of our salaries and we need some time to figure some stuff out and you just want to quit. Prove that to me. So we ask, we ask each other, our spouses, for proof. We're not asking these strangers that we're paying for proof. 
I'm just saying, you know. All right, party people. If there's nothing else, I'm out. We out. I'm getting ready to go get my wife. Um, checking on the ring. She's still doing the hair stuff. So once she's finished, she'll let me know and I go up there and get her. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to print my documents out for tomorrow. Um, and again, thank y'all for everything that y'all y'all do, y'all support. Um, I know sometimes I sound like a broken record. I do. I know. But so do they. <laughs> so do they. By my course. 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 They sound like a broken record. And then you buy their course. And you're still in the same status that you was in before. So. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right. Well, there's nothing else. As I always say, if, if, all, if, if all hearts and minds are clear, um, we are good to go. And again, I truly do appreciate y'all immensely. And I believe if you operate outside of the realm of fear, you're going to be fine in this business. You really are. All right. Talk to y'all later. Peace.